Welcome to the Cosmic Savannah with Dr. Daniel Kunema and Dr. Jacinta Del Hayes. Each episode, we'll be giving you a behind the scenes look at world class astronomy and astrophysics happening under African skies. Let us introduce you to the people involved, the technology we use, the exciting work we do, and the fascinating discoveries we make. Sit back and relax as we take you on a safari through the skies. Hello, welcome to episode 18. Welcome, and apologies for my cold. Oh, <laughs> sounding a little nasally there, Dan. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so what are we talking about today? So today we're talking about African scars. Yeah. Uh, in the truest sense, we're talking... Uh, we're leaving South Africa. Leaving South Africa, going into Africa, talking about Kenya and Nigeria, uh, some of the exciting things happening there, and how we're kind of... how people are utilising our... African dark scars uh, for good, uh, for education, for economic gain, and basically capitalizing on this advantage we have. In South Africa, we have this act, the Astronomy Geographic Advantage Act, which kind of covers the SKA and Meerkat. And I think that's something which is true in most of Africa. We we are at a, a real advantage when it comes to having nice, clean, dark scars and I think that's something that we should really work on and use to our, our advantage. Yeah, exactly. I think um, sort of the African continent has a lot of negative connotations um, and even, you know, to the people themselves sometimes. But then we're going to hear from two people today who treat it as an asset with joy and are trying to get more people um, to fall in love with with Africa's dark skies. And yeah, as you said, to use it to help boost the economy. Yeah, and I think more than that, in Africa, if you have a relationship with the stars, and a lot of people live rural, they see the stars much better than people who live in big cities or in uh, Europe and the States, uh, where, I mean, if you're lucky, you can see a couple of hundred stars on a dark night, whereas in the dark places, you can see thousands, thousands and thousands of stars in the Milky Way and in the Southern Hemisphere you can see the Magellanic Clouds. So people have this ongoing relationship with the skies um, through their own understandings and we'll talk a little bit about that too. But also even today just having that fascination and, and interest in the stars. Yeah, I think everybody feels some sort of connection with the stars, with the night sky, certainly if you've grown up seeing it. Uh, nowadays, a lot of us haven't, you know, if we've grown up in cities. Yeah, which is very sad. That's yeah. something we'll try and fix. Yeah. Okay. So today we're going to be speaking to Carrington Kenyan Dewey, who is a master's student at the University of Nairobi studying uh, theoretical astrophysics, and also from Oleinka Fagbamiro, who works at the Nigerian Space Agency and with Astronomers Without Borders. Uh, And from both of those, we're going to hear about amazing initiatives to use um, astronomy and the space industry and the night sky to inspire a nation and a continent. And you caught up with them both, so I look forward to hearing. Yeah, so I caught up with um, Carrington and and Ole Inka at uh, this year's Astronomy in Africa conference earlier on in the year, where they were visiting Cape Town, and I got to hear their incredible stories. So Carrington as I said, is a student in Nairobi in Kenya, and he is also involved in a project called Sayari, which is uh, an astronomy education and astrotourism campaign to get the uh, the safari lodges, the game lodges, to also have a um, component for the tourists uh, about yeah astrotourism, so looking up at the night sky, learning the ethnoastronomy, so the stories of the local people, and um, sort of building a better connection with the sky and, uh, and generating some more more income. Uh, so he's involved with training speakers and uh, sort of campaigning the lodges and these sorts of things. So let's hear from Carrington. We're now talking to Carrington Kinyanjui. Welcome, Carrington. Thank you for having me, Jacinta. It's a pleasure. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, I, I, I can tell a lot. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, I'm a student. My name is Carrington Kinyanjui. I'm a student uh, at the University of Nairobi back in Kenya. 
Uh, I'm also with the Sayari Astronomy Outreach and Astrotourism Group. Uh, we are basically a bunch of students who work walk around Kenya. Sayari is Swahili for planet. Uh, planet is Greek for wanderer. So we wander about in Kenya, uh, telling astronomical stories, learning astronomical stories from the local community and trying to create a sustainable outreach and astrotourism business model in Kenya. So yeah, that's what we do. So wonderful. Mm, yeah. um, okay, I have so many questions, I'm not even sure where to start. Uh, okay, so now you obviously are, have a big interest in astronomy and yeah. you are doing yes, an, yeah. uh, a degree in, yes. in astronomy. Yes, a master's, yeah. yeah. Right, just, yeah. let's just start there. Yeah. What, did, what got you going interested in that and what are, you, what are you working on at the moment? So, funny story, it's, it's a novel. It's a novel that got me interested in astronomy. Um, it was um, Angels and Demons by Dan Brown. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Great. Uh, I'm a novel person. I'm still a novel person. So uh, I read it and discovered this part of physics that is not taught in secondary schools in Kenya. So physics is this boring thing that tells you how doors move. Uh, I learned about particles, antiparticles, antimatter, colliders, Big Bang. And I was wondering, is this really real? So I went to check it out in the library and found, wow. This is real stuff, and uh, that's when that's where I started uh, back in high school. Uh, I got interested in astronomy, and I then applied to my undergraduate, and I was accepted to study astronomy at the University of Nairobi. So that's my origin story, if you will. Yeah, I think that's probably the best origin story I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, Jacinta. Yeah. Okay, and so yeah. you went to university, and yeah. then and then what are you doing with that now? So after that, uh, I graduated. Uh, I then enrolled back for master's uh, in theoretical astrophysics at the University of Nairobi. Uh, after that, we were selected with a group of other students from engineering, geospatial engineering, electrical, uh, physics-related fields. We were selected by the project called Development of Africa with Radio Astronomy. Uh, so they told us to put in a proposal uh, uh, of a project we would like to do in our country. So we had a discussion and voted on it. And one of us proposed that we should um, try find a sustainable business-like project in the country. Uh, we settled on astrotourism, taking into account that Africa has such beautiful dark skies. Mm, it's, it's amazing. Uh, those Africans living in the city try going to the rural areas at least once per month. You will see what I'm talking about. So we decided to sell that as a product of Africa uh, through astrotourism. So it would entail training guides and all this stuff. Yeah, I guess we'll get into that later. Yeah, yeah well, let's yeah. jump straight into oh, it okay. now. Okay. Why not? Okay, so you've... <laughs> So you're running a project called Sayari. So tell yes. us more about that. So Sayari is um, Swahili for planets. Uh, planet is Greek for wanderer. So that's what we do. We wander about the country. Uh, so we move the, the project specifically. We do outreach and we also work on astrotourism. Uh, so the idea is to get game parks. Uh, specifically lodges in game parks, because that's the arrangement back in Kenya, uh, to get interested and to invest in astronomy, maybe by a telescope, maybe by a pair of binoculars or something, a laser pointer even, uh, and then have that as part of their products. So they not only sell game drives, but also sell the night sky uh, to the tourists and maybe charge a fee for it and maybe employ someone to do that, uh, a local with local knowledge. Uh, another part of it, a strong part of it, is, the eth is what we call ethno-astronomy. We know that Africans had their own stories of the night sky because they moved around using the night sky as a compass. So we want to know those stories. And tourists who come to Kenya want to know those stories. So I think it is interesting to also sell that. Uh, as part of the products of, of, of Africa. We are working to try get um, dark sky 
certification for our local game parks. So we focused on one game park called the Mara, Masai Mara, I'm sure it's famous. So the idea is to try convince them to preserve the night sky and sell that as a product. So for some of our international listeners who might not be familiar, yeah. so game parks are like safari parks, right? Yes. Where you can pay to go in and there's a, it's, a, it's a reserve for wild animals. Yes, exactly, exactly that. So basically what happens is that the government sublets part of the, the government first isolates uh, areas with wild animals and forests and, and what have you. Then it sublets these to private companies, at least in the Kenyan arrangement. It sublets these to private companies who then use it as a product and pay the government some bit of money, either the government or the local government. Yeah, so that's the arrangement. Right, so this is a sustainable source of income for Kenya. Tourism is a big part of the economy. Exactly. And yeah. uh, so, you know, obviously Kenya has some of the most incredible safari reserves exactly. in the world yeah. with True. just vast areas, so many animals, wild animals, just yes. living living in nature. And, and so, yeah. of course, people want to come and see this. Yes. And so why not at the same time? Look up. Look up, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, just look up. Uh, and and see and see the beauty of it, yeah. Uh, so most of tourists to Kenya are are Europeans, are Americans, Australians, and <laughs> so most of the most of the night sky is gone to them because of the huge cities. You think about New York, California. Think about Paris. Think about London. So the night sky is gone for them. Uh, for this reason, um, it will be interesting to have them look up occasionally and and maybe hear the stories of other uh, other other people so most of astronomy stories are, are by the greeks because the greeks wrote it down so the greeks tell their stories so we would also like to document our stories and and tell them to tourists yeah. that's part of it yeah do you have an example of any of these stories that you might give us a sneak preview <laughs> of <laughs> yeah uh, so the samburu have an interesting story um what we call the Milky Way galaxy um, comes from the Greek, yeah. So in the Samburu name for it is Ngokwar Enkai. Uh, that is the belt of God. So wow. to them, to them, that was part of part of part of the clothes of God, if you if you would have it that way. So that's interesting. Uh, they also have a specific. They call the Orion Belt. To them, it's a village. It's a village with cows coming out, the three, the, three, the three stars of the Orion's belt. So they have their own way of looking at things and they have their own stories, which, I, which we found very interesting. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Um, it's, it's so fascinating to hear how yeah. the, the people of different cultures have uh, come up with completely different stories Story, and yeah. naming for the stars yes. and, uh, and how that, that was a really important part of their lives. Yes, yes. Uh, you see, Jacinta, you didn't know of that story. You only knew of the Greeks. Uh, do you know of your local story? Uh, well, I am probably not the best person to tell the story, <laughs> but uh, yes, I know that the um, the first people of Australia, the Indigenous the, Aboriginal people, the um, they have uh, various stories as well about mm. uh, the night sky. Mm. And one of them, when you look at the Milky Way, I believe the Aboriginal people focused less on the stars what you could see with light, but actually looked at the dark patches. Ah, that's and interesting. Yeah, and there's like a dust lane going through the centre yeah, of the Milky Way. Is, yeah. And they think that this uh, looks like an emu. So this was the big wow. emu in the sky. And indeed, mm -hmm. when you see it and you trace out the pattern, it does, it look, does look like an emu, <laughs> which is, of course, a big uh, bird, flightless bird in Australia. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, so the point is to get all these stories written down and, and at least maybe for the locals of any community, any country, to at least know their own own stories so we are trying to do a lot of that in Kenya we think that is important not paying maybe not paying but it is important yeah yeah and so when will this project start Sayari so, so it actually started last year um, around September 
uh, that's when we got our approval for funding. Uh, we got the telescope sent and then we went to the game parks and started training uh, training the, the guides. We want them to have some basic knowledge of astronomy so that they can talk competently with, with the tourists. So we trained them for a week uh, and we went back for follow up uh, in February. So we are currently in talks with them. We want to formalize a formal contract because this is a private business agreement to have a formal contract where we lease the telescope to them and then we let them use it as a product with the tourists and with some form of income. Uh, we are still in discussions with them. We haven't finalized the contract. But the local game parks, a uh, special shout out to Governor's Camp, uh, are very interested in learning and, and running the project. So we are still in talks with them. Uh, we hope this goes well. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mm. And mm. and I really uh, send my best wishes to you as well. Thank you. Yeah. For this. Um, I yeah. think it's an absolutely brilliant idea. Thank you. And Thank if you, any Jacinta. of our, Yeah, of course. If any mm. of our listeners are interested in, in coming to visit one of one of these, where can they find information? So um, uh, we have a website, uh, www.sayari.co.ke. Um you can have, uh, you can shoot me an email, uh, Kinyanjui Carrington at Gmail. I assume it will appear somewhere. Um, we, then we can have a talk. Uh, we are interested in replicating this all over Africa because Africa is usually called the dark continent. Um, people think that's a bad thing. It's a wonderful thing. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So we want to replicate this in Africa. Most probably South Africa, start with South Africa and our neighboring countries, Uganda and Tanzania. We think it will be a beautiful thing uh, so that it is understood that this is a product of the African continent. I think that's interesting. Yeah. Of course, we'll put those uh, related links on our website so any listeners who are interested can go and have a look. And, and just how do you spell Sayari? Sayari, so that's S-A-Y-A-R-I, yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. If, do you have any final messages for our listeners? Uh, come to Kenya. <laughs> come to Kenya. Um, we want, we want, we don't want, there's a story going around that in Kenya especially that academically trained astronomers have difficulty finding employment. Uh, there's a problem with our tourism numbers dropping down. So, yeah, we can cry about that or we can innovate our way out of all these problems. We are human beings. Our job is to think most of the time. So we would like the young people to take up these opportunities in your respective countries. It doesn't matter. Uh, if you are a physics trained young person, there's no reason why you can't carry out this project in your country, in your local area. Uh, just be innovative and and work your way into a solution. Uh, I'd like to thank um, DARA, Development of Africa with Radio Astronomy, for the incredible support. Um, the Organization of Astronomy for Development, for a lot of support that went into this project. Uh, Professor Baki and the Technical University of Kenya, uh, for facilitating our, our, our movement, our logistics. And my personal university, the University of Nairobi, which I represent here, uh, I've studied, and I would also like to thank the government of Kenya. I've studied all through uh, using bursaries. Yeah. So I'd like to thank everybody who supported us. And we'd like to thank you, Carrington, yeah, thank for you. all of your efforts, uh, yeah. for um, uh, leading this project. Yeah, thank and you, so congratulations to you and your team. Thank you. Again, yeah. all the best. And yeah. thank you for talking with us today. Thank you, Jacinta. Thank you for having me. Great. Thank you. I, I really enjoyed that. It was interesting, wasn't it? It really was, and, and just wonderful to hear his enthusiasm. As a master's student, he's doing so much stuff already. Amazing, I know. And um, and just his, his aspiration to already take it beyond his own country. I mean, this is something which I would love to see happen in South Africa. And I know there are some initiatives to begin some astrotourism, more astrotourism in South Africa, and collect the ethno-astronomy stories in South Africa too. Some work has been done on this. There's a, a great book called Venus Rising, um, which you can download, and we'll stick a, 
uh, a link to it on our on our website and a lot of this history has been recorded but it's not necessarily shared um, mm. as widely as it should be and what Carrington talks about and trying to tell these stories and and communicate with people these different understandings of the scar um, is, is really quite wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. And I'd love to do an, another episode on um, South Africa's ethnoastronomy. Yeah, we should. I should give that book a, a solid read. And... Yeah. Well, if anyone knows a lot about this, please reach out to us because we'd love to talk to you. But off the top of your head, Dan, do you know any stories? Uh, I, I mean, I've, I know of a couple. Different communities have obviously have a different understanding of the night sky. I know in Sutherland we've got a small display about a, a boy who kind of collected the shooting stars and threw these stones up into the sky to create, you know, uh, the stars, which is, is pretty wonderful. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, yeah, yeah. so we've got a little display about that up in Sutherland. And, I mean, there's a, a wealth of different understandings of the, of the sky. The stars were used to tell the seasons, obviously, and predict planting times. Pallades was very important for that. And, yeah, there's... There's, re- there's really a lot of stuff, and we should definitely do an episode on it and find somebody who's well-versed in this to speak to. And Carrington mentioned something about Dark Skies certification. Do, are there any rules about that in Sutherland? So in Sutherland, we, we do really try very hard, and in the local Southern, Sutherland community, there is an understanding um, and some obligation to keep the, the light to a minimum, having downward-facing lights. Uh, but obviously that's just in the local community and more and more these days from towns as far as 100 kilometres away, we're starting to pick up the light pollution. I think you mentioned once that you can see Cape Town's light pollution can, from Sutherland. You can. On a, on a dark night, you can you can see a glow uh, in the sort of wow. south southwestern horizon from Cape Town, um, which is, you know, problematic and something which is very hard to deal with, obviously. But... Again, this just speaks to the value of these dark skies uh, and something which Africa has in abundance. The fact that you can get 400 Ks from a major city in the first place is pretty wonderful um, because there's not many countries when you could do that. So it is an important resource and one we should definitely preserve and celebrate. Definitely. I also loved Carrington's spirit of wanting to share his love of astronomy with, with more people. And that's also something that our, our second guest, Ole Inka Fagbamiro, is also doing. So Ole Inka is the uh, Assistant Chief Scientific Officer at the Nigerian Space Agency, which was, uh, I think, Africa's first space agency. And she's also the National Coordinator for Astronomers Without Borders, which is, um, as the name suggests, an, an international association. Uh, you don't just have to be an astronomer to participate in it. And it's about teaching everybody about astronomy in the night sky. And Oli Inka is doing a lot of fabulous work to share her love of astronomy and the space science and space industry and technology with people who have never even seen or heard of a telescope before. Astronomers Without Borders is a wonderful project and they, uh, you know, so they run projects all around the world trying to reach as many people as they can with astronomy. And yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear what she has to say about it. Let's hear from her. Hi, we're chatting with Ola Yinka Fagbamiro. Welcome, Ola Yinka. Hello, hi. Uh, Ola Inka, you're from the Nigerian Space Agency, is that right? Yes, please. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're, who you are, where you're from, and what your job is? Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Ola Inka Fabemiro. I'm an assistant chief scientific officer at the Nigerian Space Agency, which is National Space Research and Development Agency in Abuja, Nigeria. I'm also the founder and national coordinator for Astronomers Without Borders in Nigeria. We started in 2013. So basically what I do, both at the Nigeria Space Agency and at AWB, is um, astronomy education, outreach, and um, trying to create awareness on astronomy and space science in general, in Nigeria. You said that there's a, a lack of awareness of, of astronomy in Nigeria. So how did you get involved in the first place? Okay, well, I got involved by accident, if I may use that by word. By accident? Yes, by <laughs> accident, because um, when I was 
Growing up, I didn't have anyone tell me about astronomy. I didn't know what astronomy was. But one thing that I remembered vividly um, is the fact that as kids, we would be outside, out there in the evening, and then we look at the moon, we look at the stars, and then we have some elderly people, mostly non-literate people, telling us stories, and there was a lot of myths about astronomy, like, you know, they, they they tell you some, you know, of course, they didn't know the scientific, um, um, on that. they didn't have the scientific understanding of, of this thing. So they just come up with stories like Fox Law, or I don't know, they just come up with so many funny stories. And then, um, so they tell us those things. And, and growing up, you wanted to find out, you wanted to know more, like, is this really true? For example, they would, they would tell you things like um, if there was solar eclipse, for example, you will hear stories such as um, an elephant and a lion are fighting in the, in the world. So that is why everywhere went dark all of a sudden. And then, you know, I, I was curious. I wanted to find out as I began to grow up and then I had more understanding and I could go and read on my own. And then I found out, wow, these things went on. So that really um, made me have interest in astronomy. And so when I found myself at the Nigerian Space Agency, it was natural for me to just toe that line. So can you firstly just explain to us what the Nigerian Space Agency is? Nigerian Space Agency is a pioneer space agency in Africa. It started in 1999, May 15th. The founder, uh, the person that started, um, the government that started the agency wanted um, Nigeria to develop capabilities in, in space science and technology. And so the agency was started. And um, over the past um, 20 years this year, the, the agency has been involved in a lot of um, developmental projects and, and activities. They have different centers. Um, they, they do a lot of things about um, satellite technology and development, satellite transport and propulsion, geodesy and geodynamics, um, basic space and atmospheric studies, um, atmospheric research, and a whole lot. The, the, the agency does a whole lot. Over the course of these years of its existence, also the, the agency has been able to launch um, about six satellites to date, which were done in collaboration with um, international organizations and countries uh, because we are yet to develop capability in launching the satellite on home soil. So what the agency does is collaborate with um, China, with United Kingdom, and, and so on, and then um, they, they have this project. Can you tell us more about what your particular role is? Okay, so like I said, I'm an education outreach officer, and what that means is um, I carry out a lot of education outreaches. We want to be able to reach out to a lot of Nigerian kids, there are millions of Nigerian kids, um, and we're trying to develop the next generation of kids in Africa who are going to take over the, the space industry. We want to create awareness. We want kids to know about space. We want kids to know about astronomy. And so we want them to develop interest in having careers in, in these fields. And um, also, we are trying to train teachers because we know that um, a lot of teachers don't even know about space science uh, themselves because uh, most of our curricula do not have space science or astronomy as a subject in, in elementary and high schools. So we're training teachers, we're training kids, we are popularizing astronomy, we are popularizing space science and technology. That is what we do. That is what I do. 
Wonderful. I mean, it's it's obviously really important, and like you said, uh, there's a lot of kids who don't know about it, and and who could know about it. Yeah. Uh, we need the next generation of of people trained so that they can take over. Take over, yes. Right. Uh, so now you you said that you also founded the Astronomy Without Borders Nigeria in 2013. What's that about? Okay, thank you very much. Um, Astronomers Without Borders is a global body. Um, the president is Mike Simmons from the United States. I think he started the, the, the organizations. And then over the years, um, we have different countries keen in, into that. And like the name suggests, like a, a community of, of astronomers from all around the world. So in 2013, I met um, Mike Simmons at a conference in Germany. Before AWB was funded, I was already into outreach activities. So it was really easy for me to, you know, transit into, into AWB. And since inception, we have been able to reach out to thousands of kids. I have, I work with a young, uh, a, a team of young and enthusiastic scientists and engineers from Nigeria. And our passion, our motivation is to see the next generation of African kids, of Nigeria kids, getting to know more about astronomy and getting to pick up careers in astronomy as they grow up. What are the sort of projects that you do as part of Astronomy Without Borders Nigeria? Great. Um, so the, we have a lot of projects that we do. Um, the most um, popular being the um, Astronomy Outreach, which means we go outside, we go on the streets, we go to schools, we go to places of worship. We are literally everywhere creating awareness uh, about astronomy. We, we have telescopes which we take out. And a lot of kids have not seen telescopes in their lives, that, you know, in their lives. So, so when, when we go out and then we carry the telescopes, we are able to excite them because when they see telescopes and then we, we, we use that as an opportunity to teach them. Um, also, we train teachers because there are millions of kids in Nigeria and then the membership of AWB is such that we would never be able to like cover all the grants. So we, 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 we started this idea of training the trainers where we train science teachers and then they go in turn back to the school to, to, to train their kids, um, their pupils. Also, we have some gender based projects, um, like the girls astronomy uh, camp. Because in Nigeria, a lot of girls are out of school and then there is this gender gap in, in STEM education in Nigeria. So we, we started this project, which we, um, we, we focused on the girls to make sure they also are not left behind. Also, we have, um, we key in into some international astronomical events. For example, if you have, if we have, um, solar eclipse or lunar eclipse or any of such activities, we, we organize events, um, around that, uh, um, um, event. We, we organize programs in Nigeria around such events and then we invite people and we have, astronomy outreach with them as well. Are there any messages you'd like to share with our listeners? Yes. Um, um, first and foremost, uh, I want to say that kids are generally excited about astronomy everywhere in the world. You know, astronomy is very exciting, it is very interesting, and then a lot of kids... Um, can relate to how interesting and exciting it is to just look up the sky and then you're able to see stars, you're able to see the moon, you know. It's, it's really, um, a very good thing. Um, and so you, you don't need to push too hard before you get kids to be interested in astronomy. And that's what we've been, um, trying to do in Nigeria. 
you know, we go out on the streets and then we see kids. And by the time we are setting up our telescope, before we are done setting up, you see a, a lineup of kids already waiting because they are curious. Kids are naturally curious, so they want to know. So what is this? And then also, I think um, Africa has the, 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 the best, arguably the best um, night skies in the world because most of our uh, villages and towns don't have the problem of light pollution. So it's very easy to, to see things as opposed to people in the city centers where there's light pollution. So uh, like if I go on outreach to the villages, I just tell them, you guys think you don't have electricity and so you're, you're sad, but why not look at it this way? You have this beautiful night sky that without the heads of any device, you are able to look up and you could see the craters on the moon. So I, I think it's a good one. And then I want to encourage as many astronomers or astronomy enthusiasts in, in Africa to please um, let us reach out to kids and so that we have this next generation of African kids who are already aware of what astronomy is and who are ready to take up careers. Because whether we like it or not, we all are going to retire someday and then who is going to take over? So we need to put in more effort into astronomy education in Africa. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, thank you so much for speaking with us today, Olayinka. I think that the work you're doing is so incredibly important and congratulations to you and to all of your your team members you. and uh, good luck for it in the future. Thank you very much. Great stuff. I didn't know Nigeria had a space agency, never mind the first one. Uh, yeah, well-established one launching its own satellites. Yeah, it's incredible. Uh, very exciting. And Nigeria is a big country, and I'm glad they're supporting this sort of stuff. Absolutely. And also, the Astronomers Without Borders work she's doing is, is wonderful. It's, it's another one of these great ways in which we're trying to reach as many people as possible, and it's wonderful that these organizations exist. And if you'd like to support them, you can, actually, if you go to the Astronomers Without Borders website. Uh, astronomerswithoutborders.org, which is quite easy. Uh, you can donate and support these programs. They have a list of the programs that they're running and future programs that they will run. So you can you can see what they're doing and how it's having an, an effect. Yeah, and we didn't get a much chance to go into into a lot of detail with Oli Yinka about the exact projects that she's running, but they're, uh, she's just such a driven person and they're so passionate and just so much so much stuff that they're doing. And I loved what she was saying about taking out a telescope and the, the kids had never seen it before and they were wildly excited to have a look through it. Yeah, it's one of the great things about astronomy and not just what you see through a telescope. I think so many people you encounter have never looked through a telescope before. It almost doesn't matter what they're looking at. Even if you point at a, an Earth-like bound object, uh, people are excited. It's, it's quite a thing to see that sort of magnification. Yeah, and Olenka made a really good point that, that we really need to put more effort into astronomy education in Africa. And I thought it was really interesting how both her and Carrington got interested in astronomy by complete accident. I, I think it's surprising how often that happens. For, unfortunately, I did not. No. I, I, was, <laughs> I was very interested. Well, as we heard in the previous episode, it was directly handed to me in a book. <laughs> yeah. but, a lot, but a lot of people uh, have stumbled into mm. astronomy. It's not one of those things which he, people hear enough about. Uh, you don't hear about it as a child, as a possible career path. And to some degree, that falls on us. And that's kind of the stuff we're trying to do here is show people what people are doing in astronomy, um, all of the varied careers people are involved in and how you can be involved in astronomy. And if that can get through to young children, then maybe they will see astronomy as a, a career option. Yeah, and also that Africa excels at astronomy. It's it's something that we can all all be proud of. Absolutely, and and grow. I think yeah, it's it's growing very very Definitely. fast. And there's a lot of growth to happen in Africa. It's a it's a very exciting place to be. That's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's true. There's a there's a, a massive pull right now to African astronomy. Mm. Great, and we will have links to all of the. Uh, 
websites we've mentioned Absolutely. the projects uh, on the website so if you'd like to find out more if you'd like to donate uh, you can do so and we'll post those links yeah and uh, I think that's it for today right yeah thanks again for listening and we hope you'll join us again on the next episode of the Cosmic Savannah you can visit our website thecosmicsavannah.com where we'll have links related to today's episode and you can follow us on Twitter Facebook and Instagram at Cosmic Savannah that's Savannah spelt S-A-V-A-N-N-A-H special thanks to our guests today Carrington Kinyanjui and Olianka Fagbamiro Thanks to Mark Olnott for music production, Giannis Brink for the astrophotography, Lana Serai for graphic design, and Tabisa Fikalepi for social media support. We gratefully acknowledge the support of the South African National Research Foundation and the South African Astronomical Observatory to help keep the podcast running. You can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Please rate and review us and recommend us to a friend. And we'll speak to you next time on The Cosmic Savannah. Coming up on the Cosmic Savannah. I would like to say, um, especially to young girls, because in, this, in South Africa, most of the guys do astronomy and they think that you can't do anything. But us as girls, we can change the, the world and do astronomy, and we have the power to do that. And astronomy is a lot of things that you would want to know, and you can explore a lot. <laughs>